Although this stamp has what looks to be a British soldier from the 18th century, the stamp is from the Caribbean island of St. Lucia. The value is 5 cents and there is a cancellation mark across the stamp with no information. Flipping the stamp to the side, we can see that the soldier depicted is a grenadier belonging to the 70th regiment of foot around the year 1775. I got the date from the very bottom left of the stamp which has 1986 and looking up online St. Lucia uses the currency of East Caribbean dollars. Now this is part of a much larger set from St. Lucia depicting British military uniforms from both infantry and artillery regiments from about 1775 to 1803. It's no surprise to see a Commonwealth country depict British military uniforms on a stamp. A Commonwealth country is a country that once belonged to the British Empire and St. Lucia had just gained its independence seven years prior to the issuing of the stamp. Yet they still regard the British crown as their monarch. So it's common for countries such as St. Lucia to depict British royalty, British events, British pop culture and in this case British military uniforms. Now I did some interesting reading into Grenadiers and for me to explain it to you I'm gonna to have to quickly go to the grocery store to get some props. So I'll be right back. are grenades or grenade in French meaning pomegranate as well as grenada in Spanish and the reason why I bring this fruit into the discussion is because this is what grenadiers and grenades are named after. Now in the late 16th century European infantry started to throw metal balls about this size filled with shrapnel, uh, gunpowder and having a fuse on it and they just happen to look like pomegranates. Uh, just to add to it as well if you were to cut one of these guys open you'd see a shrapnel like mess inside. So a grenadier would have to be a pretty big guy because he would have to be able to throw a heavy grenade quite some distance. He would also have to be incredibly brave for a couple of reasons. One, he has to be really close to all the danger so he can throw the grenade. And second of all, he would have to wait till the grenade is right about ready to explode in order to throw it. You don't want the other guys to catch it and then throw it back at you. So you not only had to be strong, you also had to be very brave in order to do the job. And that's who became the Grenadiers, the strongest and the bravest. Now the Grenadier was particularly useful in the Thirty Years War where I could just lob it into a group of men still using the pike. Or attacking a fortification I could throw it over the wall. But when the musket was introduced, warfare became a little different and I couldn't get close enough to throw my grenade. So. <laughs> The Grenadier kind of stopped using a grenade. So Grenadier no longer used the grenade as a primary weapon, but the Grenadier still existed. Uh, it was always still the bravest and strongest men that were selected for the role. You'll notice on the stamp that the Grenadier is wearing quite an elaborate hat. And the most famous Grenadiers today are the Grenadier Guards protecting Buckingham Palace. They too are wearing a fluffy hat. So what's the deal? Now, to get brave men to sign up as Grenadier, you would have to incentivize them. Uh, after all, they're either throwing grenades or taking part in more dangerous missions. So, Grenadiers received higher pay as well as a better uniform, and one that gave them an elite status on the field as well as intimidated the enemy because of the bearskin hat that makes them look a lot taller. Now, back to the stamps. You can find stamps around the world that celebrate their Grenadiers. Uh, including this one from France, as well as Argentina, of course Britain, and then this one from Uruguay. Well, so let me know if that was an information overload, but there was a lot to say about the Grenadier. Anyway, thanks for watching and please subscribe if you haven't yet. Otherwise, happy collecting!